Come let us worship our King Come let us bow at His feet He has done great things See what our Savior has done See how His love overcomes He has done great things He has done great things Oh, hero of heaven you conquered the grave, you free every captive, break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken the life, oh Jesus, I sing your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. You've been faithful through every storm. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. And I know you will do it again. For your promise is yes and amen. You will do great things. God, you do great Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive, break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken the light. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted out. Oh, God, you have done great things.
strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God.
my church Oh my God He will not delay My refuge and strength Always And I will not fear His promise is true My God will come through Always, and oh my God, He will not delay my refuge and strength. Always, oh, I will not fear His promise is true. My God will come through. Even when I don't feel it, you're working 
You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. And even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. The way you make a miracle work, you promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are the way you make a miracle work, you promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. That is who. That is who you are. 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 One more time, church. You are. We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are. We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 Father God, as we just we stand in your presence and worship and we sing your holy name, God, you are the promise maker, promise keeper. You're the light in the darkness. God, you are God. We come to serve you and worship you as you are, holy and righteous, worthy of all our praise and adoration. God of God, King of kings, Lord of lords, and Father, we just surrender all to you this morning. We ask that you make a way in our lives, in our hearts, in our minds, God. Do what only you can do. Fill us with your peace, your presence, the power of your Holy Spirit, and lead us the way you want us to be led. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Waymaker. It's in your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Life is fragile. It's a fact we're learning in real time, every day. What we once called normal has seemingly disappeared. There's uncertainty in the air, restlessness in our hearts. Things we once took for granted are becoming difficult to find. Our usual day-to-day -day has evolved into this odd chaos. Peace is becoming obsolete. Many have lost jobs, security, and those they love. The pain is undeniable. But what if our fragility caused us to lean harder into God? What if, in our weakness, we chose to rely more on His strength? Would our outlook change? Would the peace that passes understanding begin to drown out the noise of this moment? Would we walk in a quiet confidence, knowing our God is mighty to save? We're not promised tomorrow, but we are given a simple truth to stand on. Our God goes before us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Yes, life is fragile. But in our weakness, He is strong. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning service. Really glad you're with us today. Uh, you might want to take your Bibles and turn to Isaiah chapter 40. 
Isaiah chapter 40, incredible chapter, incredible truths in this chapter. I was all ready to do it. I went to bed last night and as I was reading something, uh, a, a book was mentioned in what I was reading and I looked up the book and began to read and, and I've changed what I'm gonna talk about. We're still gonna be in Isaiah chapter 40, but Isaiah chapter 40 is incredible. Beginning of verse 12, the end of the chapter, there are seven fantastic things about God that are just unbelievable. Um, it says, if he put all the water of the earth in the palm of his hand, it would be like a drop. It says he created all the stars. Not only did he create them, but he named them. And then he calls them by name. He says, he's calling the stars by name every day. And, and unbelievable. Uh, it says, who can counsel him? And, and it, it's so fantastic. And I was going to do those seven things. Read them for yourself in verse 12 through the end of the chapter. But I want to focus just on the end of this chapter today because I just want to go a little different direction for us. Verse 28, Isaiah 40. Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have uh, no might. He increases strength. Even the, youth, even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. As I was reading something last night, um, a man's name came up in, in what I was reading. A uh, man named Pastor John Claypool. And uh, he had a little daughter who suffered with leukemia. When she went into remission, everybody thought maybe God had healed her. On an Easter Sunday morning, she went into terrible recurrence. And in his book, Tracks of a Fellow Struggler, Claypool relates how for two weeks, his daughter was racked with pain, her eyes swollen shut. She asked him, Daddy, did you uh, talk to God about my leukemia? He said, yes, dear, we've been praying for you. Daddy, did you ask him how long the leukemia would last? What did God say? Now, what do you say to your daughter when you can't help her, when the heavens are silent, emotionally and spiritually, he was absolutely exhausted. John Claypool had been a pastor for almost two decades, ministering to others many times uh, who suffered through the loss of uh, loved ones when loss hit home with the death of his eight-year-old daughter in tracks of a fellow struggler, Claypool shares his own journey through the darkness of, of heartbreaking grief through four extraordinary sermons. I read those last night. I downloaded the book and, and, and read it to its completion. The first sermon was delivered just 11 days after his daughter's diagnosis of leukemia. The second, that's what we're gonna dwell on in a few moments, some thoughts that he had, and then we'll take it from there. But the second was after his first major, her first, first major relapse, nine months later. I already referred to that. Claypool said something to the effect, I've walked through three different ways in my Christian life. He said, sometimes we mount up with wings as an eagle and fly. We're on top of the world. Sometimes we run and we don't get weary. We just go through the routines. Sometimes it's all we can do to walk and not faint. And those are the times you say, and I need your prayers and your encouragement. At the moment that John Claypool was at his lowest, he preached probably his most influential sermon, probably one of the best I've ever read. Perhaps his greatest contribution, contribution came at his darkest hour. It was when she had, was in remission and then had a relapse. He could have said like Paul for when I am weak, then I am strong. He could have said of Isaiah 40, 31, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. The third week after her death, he spoke again to his church. It's 
some incredible statements, some deep truth. The final sermon was an inspiring reflection on the process of grieving. And he gave that sermon three years later uh, at a different church. He had changed churches with his wife. I just want to deal a little bit with uh, John 40, 31. I want us to look at this verse. I want to help us to understand what we should expect from this life we've chosen to live and to help us prepare for what is to come. I want us to look, I've, I've, I've narrowed it down to three words. Here's the first word, sore. I remember how excited I was when this adventure began for me. Now, here's the deal. I grew up in church, so I wasn't like I suddenly find myself in a new environment. My mom, my grandparents were into every new preacher, every tent meeting, every revival meeting. I can tell you, I went to so many of those. Uh, in fact, I was at Billy Graham's first tent revival in downtown Los Angeles as a child. So I, I grew up, I saw so much and so many things. Uh, so I was already used to worship service. I'd gone to a lot of youth meetings and I knew some of the Christian songs. Um, I heard Bible lessons in Sunday school. I'd been to VBS every summer throughout my entire elementary school uh, time. When I got into high school, I debunked the whole thing. I refused to even go to church. Broke my mom's heart, broke my grandfather's heart, my grandmother. I just couldn't do it. My summer after graduating from high school, I met this really beautiful girl from Wyoming, of all places. Well, we ended up getting married and about seven more years of trying to do it on my own. And I watched her love for Jesus. I watched my dad surrender his life to Jesus. He had not been the nicest man in the world. I loved him deeply, but when he gave his life to Jesus, there was such a transformation. He became the best man I ever knew in my life. With, and I can say that without any doubts. The Christian life took on a whole new significance for me. I realized for the first time that my life had meaning and purpose. For the first time, I had a sense of direction, even a sense of destiny. I started attending Bible college almost immediately, and that was out of guilt because I realized I'd gone to Sunday school, I'd gone to all these things, and I knew nothing, absolutely nothing. You know, you also began this journey when you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He bought your salvation with his precious blood, and at that moment, you surrendered yourself fully to him. You became a new creation in Christ, and your life began to move in a whole new direction. Whereas before you may have been wandering around aimlessly, now you were on a journey. Now you were going somewhere. Now you had a destiny. And it's just not a run-of-the-mill journey we're on either. It's an adventure of a journey. You never know what's going to happen next. You're going to be totally surprised. If you've ever done any uh, traveling in, in a foreign country, uh, you know how ordinary travel can suddenly become an over-the-top adventure. Traveling is never quite as seamless as you thought it would be. There are times of unexpected delays, canceled flights, missed connections, lost luggage, miserable accommodations, last-minute changes. I think every international traveler has asked himself at some point, is this what I signed up for? This is not what the brochure told me. If you want to travel internationally, you need to be able to adapt to all kinds of situations you never even thought possible. I sometimes see Christians making a similar mistake, uh, often expecting the Christian life to be like an extension of a, a week of a retreat where life is beautiful all the time and we hop from one spiritual mountaintop to the next and it's just wonderful, but that's not how it plays out. If you've come into the Christian life expecting it to be easy, I'm afraid that you got the wrong idea from the wrong brochure. You certainly didn't get that idea from the Bible at all. The Bible never promises us an easy life, but it, this is what it promises us. It promises us a meaningful life. This is why the Apostle Paul said, 
And I quote, he said, Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through as if something strange were happening to you. 1 Peter 4, 12. These problems and difficulties you face aren't strange at all. This is what life is. There are unexpected delays. There are canceled flights. There are missed connections. There are setbacks and disappointments. There are heartbreaks. And sometimes there's even danger to be dealt with. In the midst of all of this, we are able to say, therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away. Yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So what do we do? We fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, this is so cool, but what is unseen is eternal. So we fix our eyes on what is seen, the, the eternal. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Paul is saying that we're on a journey and it sometimes may, may lead to hardship, but ultimately it will lead us to glory beyond our ability to imagine. Will it be worth it? <laughs> Every single step, yes. Why? God's in control. Even when life becomes difficult, this is his journey for you, for me. It's his itinerary. He has a destination in mind for you. He has a destination in mind for me. He mapped it out for us, and he is, he is guiding us along the way, no matter what we're going through. In the early days of our Christian life, we believed this. There wasn't a problem. Um, here's, a, here's a significant word to consider. Here's our, our second word. The first word was we soar. Second word is we run. In 1 Corinthians 9, Paul said this, don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Then he said down in verse 26, so I run with purpose in every step. So every step of my Christian walk, every step of your Christian walk has purpose as we're running. The Christian life is, is compared to a race because it's a life that demands our all. God expects us to go the distance. So we're running, we're going. Think back to the early days of your Christian life. What was your intention from the very beginning? Did you say, I'll try this out for a week or two? And then maybe if the going gets tough, I'll, I'll quit. Or maybe to take a, a couple of laps around the track and uh, see, it's, see if it's real easy. And uh, maybe I'll stay, maybe I won't. No, man. When you first surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, remember, you were all in. You were ready to say, just point me in the direction of the finish line because that's where I'm going. I'm gonna cross that finish line, I'm gonna be running. That's the attitude that we need to have today. The, writers of, the writer of Hebrews said this, he said, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the, the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. So as we're running, we understand this is the race that God has set before us, and he has our destiny, our reason, our purpose, our, his plan for our lives. Our goal in the Christian life is not merely to start the race. Our goal is to finish it. If you've lapsed a little bit, hey man, it's time to start running again. The Apostle Paul said in his farewell, in Acts chapter 20, he said, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and then complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. In his final words, recorded in 2 Timothy, Paul was writing to his, his young friend, and he said to Timothy, he said, the time of my death is near. I fought the good fight. I finished the race. 
and I have remained faithful, and now the prize awaits me. 2 Timothy 4, 6, and 8. So we soar, we run, and here's the third word, we walk. This is probably the word used most often to describe our relationship with Jesus. We refer to our Christian walk again and again. I'm on my Christian walk. This is how my Christian walk is. What does the word walk tell us? It tells us that this Christian life is a daily process. There's nothing once in a while about it. It's not an on again, off again experience. It's a day after day after day after day process. Pastor Claypool says in his book, talking about walking, he says, you call this the least of the gifts? Maybe so from one standpoint, yet in another way, it was the most appropriate of all the gifts in my life. The one thing most needful in that situation. And because I was willing to settle for it, so little and yet so much, I can say honestly, my faith did make a difference when the bottom dropped out. It kept me from giving up. He continues. Well, that is how it was. And here I am this morning, sad, brokenhearted, still bearing in my spirit the wounds of the darkness. I confess to you honestly that I, I have no wings with which to fly or even any legs in which to run. But listen, by the grace of God, I'm still on my feet and I have not fainted yet. I've not exploded in the anger of presumption, nor have I keeled over into the paralysis of despair. All I am doing is walking and not fainting, hanging in there, enduring with patience what I cannot change but have to bear. This may not sound like much to you, but to me it's the most appropriate and most needful of all the gifts. He goes on, my faith has been the difference in the last two weeks. It has given me the gift of patience, the gift of endurance, the strength to walk and not faint. And I'm here to give thanks to God for that. And who knows, if I'm willing to accept this gift and just hang in there and not cop out, maybe the day will come that Laura Lou and I can run again and not be weary. And that we may even soar someday and rise up with wings as eagles. But until then, to walk and not faint, that is enough, oh God, that is enough. End quote. And so we must. We need to learn everything we can about all the ins and outs of maintaining a, a healthy Christian walk. As Paul said, if we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit in Galatians 5.22. The, Christ, the Christian life is a, a daily event, and we must tend to it on a daily basis. It's a walk, which means it's a, a lifestyle and ongoing relationship with Jesus Christ. The prophet Micah said this, the Lord has told you what is good, and this is what he requires of you, to do, to, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Micah 6, 8, that's another scripture we used to sing. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. So what will happen? They will soar high. That's the adventure of the journey we've begun. We soar like eagles at times. There are times when everything is coming together and things are happening and you, you watch things and we're soaring like eagles. And it says they will run and not grow weary. That's the race we've set out to win. We're going to cross that finish line. We're going to keep running, no matter how tired we get. And then it says, and they will walk and not faint. That's that day-to-day -day lifestyle we pursue. How do we get there? It says in that verse that those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. Now listen, there's a common denominator to be found 
in the first days of the Christian life and the best seasons of your life since then, when you had good times and those times when you first started, the common denominator is this, Jesus front and center in all that you do. When you put all your hope in him, what happens? Your strength is renewed. Your best days are no longer a thing of the past. Your best days are the promise of the future. That's the Christian walk. It's a, a journey, an adventure, an adventure in, in which we surrender to God direction, direction and allow him to, to lead where he wants, wants us to go. It's, it's a race that we run to completion, relying on him to give us the strength to stay faithful to the finish. It's a walk that we take every day with Jesus front and center, seeking his presence in every step of the way. When we consider our life this way, every day, we'll discover that our best days aren't merely a relic of the past, they're the promise of our future. And that's the Christian life. And as I start reading the book, I began to see things about my life. I began to remember the soaring and the running and still running and try, try, trying to keep, keep going until I cross that finish line. And all of a sudden I realized my role is to keep walking. I'm going to finish that, that, that line. I'm going to cross that line, but I need to keep walking. I'm going to allow him to renew my strength. I want to allow him. See, when I was walking with Wanda through her time of, of pain and suffering and the things he struggled her last few years and, and especially the last several months, and she crossed her finish line. I'm still moving, but I can rejoice in the fact that we walk a walk that God has for us. We don't have to understand it, but we need to accept it. We need to say, okay, God, I'm gonna walk this walk. Maybe it's not what I signed up for, but I've lost some luggage. I've missed a couple of flights. I've been grounded a few times. I didn't like the room I was staying in, and that's, that's maybe our lives. But it's a life that will honor him in all that we do. And so as I was reading through Isaiah 40, and I came just to those final final verses. Oh, all the statements about how awesome God is and how wonderful he is and how magnificent he is. You see in those verses that he's omniscient and omnipotent and omnipresent and all of those, all, all powerful, all everything. And that is, that is such a confidence builder and so incredible that right now so many of us are walking and it hasn't been what we thought it was going to be. Some of you have told me about maybe your business isn't going to survive. Walk it through with Jesus. He knows. He's there. He's going to walk it through with you. Maybe you're hurting being alone. Maybe you're frightened being alone. Walk it through with you. Use this time. It was incredible as I'm laying in bed last night. And all of a sudden, I, I, I just see a mention of this book. And I, I go to it. I download it from Kindle. And I... I began to read it and all of a sudden there was a, a strengthening of re realizing that this pastor lost his 10 year old daughter to leukemia. And he said, I could walk and not faint. I could walk and continue to go as devastating as hurting as that was because I could trust Jesus. So I just wanted to tell you this morning, whatever you're going through, whatever's happening, Jesus is there. He's walking it through with you. He wants to continue to walk it through with you. Just trust him. He's got a plan and it's gonna be right. Father, as we just come before you for a few moments, I pray for my brothers and sisters. I pray for those listening right now. I pray for hurting folks. I pray for people that remember the time of soaring, remember running the race and they're just barely walking right now. Would you strengthen them? Let them know that's part of the journey. It'll <laughs> be a time maybe they'll soar again. They'll start running, but right now they're walking. Help them lift up one foot after the other. Just make that available to them, Lord. We thank you for that, Jesus. We love you and we trust you. 
Just keep us all walking. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Hey, listen to the words of this psalm as we close. God bless you. See you tomorrow morning, okay? Bye-bye. like lightning I saw darkness run for cover but the miracle that I just can't get over is my name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders and I have a resurrection power but the miracle that I just can't get over is my name is registered in heaven. Yeah, my parade belongs to you forever. Yeah, this is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrites my story. I'll testify in Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony, this is my testimony. We come together, sons and daughters, we bought with blood and washed with water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Yeah, our God. This is my testimony from death to life, cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony, this is my testimony. Not dead and you're not done. You heard things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead and you're not done. The greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead and you're not done. The greater things are still to come. Oh, I testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony